evening everybody for another session with Mark Sims for the eight doctors. My name is Nina and I use the pronouns of she and her and I'm the AP519 early on Guadalupe coordinator. But before we start with another wonderful presentation by Mark Sims, I would like for us to take the time to acknowledge the land that we're on because the 519 Community Center is currently located at downtown Toronto. I'll be doing the land acknowledgement for Toronto. We acknowledge the land that we're meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nation, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. And I would like for us to take some time to really honor the land that we're on and the people who first lived on this land. Thank you, everybody. And now I'm going to hand it over to Mark. Thank you, Nina. Okay, let's do our shared screen. All right. So today we're looking at sunshine and air, and I would stress fresh air, not air inside your home, not air in an office building, fresh air. And I'm also going to talk to you or teach you about taking an oxygen cocktail. Okay, so. Sunshine. We'll start off with sunshine. So what is the big deal about sunshine? Well, sunshine has been called the vitamin D. So sunshine is vitamin D, they call it the vitamin D. So what happens with the sun, it's not that the sun is actually giving you vitamin D, but what happens is as the sun shines, it causes your body to actually make that vitamin D. So you need to have ex exposure to the sun. How much time should you be in the sun? About five, 15, maximum 30 minutes of direct sunlight. And you should have your arms bare and your face. And that will get you a good portion of sun being absorbed into your body. The other thing is you wanna make sure that those rays are getting to you because it helps to reduce inflammation it also helps your body to, for your, for your cells to actually work better, to do what they need to do. So getting exposure will do that for you. You also will get your, the vitamin D helps your body to convert calcium and utilize that calcium so that, and we, as we talk further, we'll talk more about the strengthening of the bones. So the vitamin D, helps with helping you to stay healthier. It helps to boost your immune system and the amount of exposure that you get, you don't wanna be out too long. So the recommended, recommended dose, like I said, is five to 15, maximum 30 minutes, but it also depends on your skin tone. So if you have darker melanin or darker skin, then you can stay out a bit longer. If your skin is fairer, then you may not want to stay out as long. You want to make sure also the time of day that you go out. So you should go out early in the morning or later in the evening. That's when the sun starts going down. And the reason being because the rays aren't as strong and you're able to actually enjoy the sun, the benefits of that sun without its harmful effects. So these are some expressions. So what happens and what's happening here is the sun actually helps to improve your mood, believe it or not, because, and, and what happens basically is your eyes, your eyes take in that sunlight and it helps to stimulate the production of serotonin. And I keep talking about serotonin because serotonin is that, free feel good drug. So it helps to stimulate the production of serotonin and you feel good. So that's going to improve your mood. Plus it also helps with anxiety, 
depression. And they've actually done studies showing that by having exposure to the sun, it does alleviate depression. And also for people who suffer from SAD, which is seasonal, the seasonal affectiveness disorder, that's it, seasonal affective disorder, then they found that exposure to the sun or the lack thereof causes this, this condition. So you want to make sure, again, you get out in the sun and that will help to, to alleviate that. The time when this mostly happens is in the winter time because the sun is overcast and you don't get that direct sunlight. So they've actually invented the, uh, the artificial sunlight and you'll get that and you spend, again, anywhere from five to 30 minutes in front of this, this light and that helps to stimulate your serotonin production and you end up feeling much better because of it. So get out in the sun and get that. And if you can't get out in the wintertime, especially, then you may need to get that, that seasonal light. Also, people who are not able to get that sunlight, they could develop autoimmune disorders or they could also end up getting multiple sclerosis, which is odd, I find. But the studies have been done to actually show that. So think about your body and get that sunlight. I love this picture. He's showing all these different children having restful, deep sleep. And this is a type of sleep that we want to have. So remember I talked about the sun when you, you get up in the morning and that early morning sun shining on your eyes. It helps produce a serotonin, but it also helps with the melatonin production. And that melatonin is what is going to give you that deep sleep. So who knew sunlight actually did all these different things? So good quality sleep, early morning sunlight, look up. And also, believe it or not, that early morning sunlight, just looking into that early morning sunlight, again, it has to be the early morning because if you're looking at it midday, then the sun is too bright and you can actually damage your eyes. But early morning sunlight, looking into that sun for a minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, it actually helps to stimulate your eyes and would also, also help to improve your eyesight, believe it or not. Now, remember we talked about the production, the strengthening of the bones. So because vitamin D is needed to, for your body to assimilate the calcium and the calcium then makes you have stronger bones, you getting out, getting that sun, it's going to cause you to have stronger bones. Then the bones will hold that calcium so much better. Without the sun, the calcium doesn't get to, the, your bone doesn't get to absorb that calcium. And that could lead to you getting brittle bone or another term is osteoporosis or for children who cannot get that vitamin D from, from, the, from, uh, from their food as adults can, they will get, end up getting rickets, which is soft bones. So you're looking at getting out, getting that sun. Adults, we can get out there and get the sun and our bodies will absorb it converting and turning it into vitamin D, and then we're able to get that strong bones. Believe it or not, the vitamin D also helps with digestion. So you're getting all these wonderful things happening and it's free, it's not costing you anything. The only thing it's going to cost you is getting out into open air, getting a little bit of exercise as you're walking, as you're taking in the, the rays, and that's, Bonus. So remember, we talked about the eight doctors, and these are this is the sunlight is part of one of those doctors. So you're going to get all these benefits, and it's not costing you anything. Only thing it's costing you is a little time. Like I said, 15 minutes, you're good. Also, believe it or not, sunlight is great for heart health. And the reason being, when you're out in the sun, 
your your blood vessels actually they get bigger they dilate so you have capillaries which are small vessels and taking in the sun will cause them to expand and the blood will actually flow through so much easier the recommended daily allowance so if you're doing supplementation for vitamin d the recommended allowance should be between four to 400 to 1000 iu and the iu stands for international units so if you take your recommended daily allowance and i'm going to actually say it should be a bit more but for the daily recommended allowance is 400 to 1000 and how they came about that ratio was in World War II, when the soldiers were, were fighting, they could not always get the, the food to the lines in time. And they found that their soldiers were malnutrition. So the scientists got together and they said, how are we gonna make sure our soldiers get the nutrients that they need? And they thought about it, they said, how much do they actually need each day to function? And they came up with these numbers. Now, the thing between now and then is right now, we are under a lot more stressors than those people back in World War II. We are experiencing a lot more, more chemical effects. We're also experiencing more, more pressures of life. Our workload seems to be higher. We're also not getting the proper amount of sleep or exercise. So our body is constantly under bombardment, bombardment. So the amount of vitamin D that we need now, you're looking at about 3,000 IUs per day, not 1,000. So the 1,000, it's good if you are not getting any, but in order to get the right levels for each day, the recommended, the new recommendation is actually 3,000. But the recommendation, if you look at any vitamin D uh, bottles, it will tell you 1,000 IUs per day. So for your heart health, the sunshine will actually improve the blood flow and therefore your heart will be healthier. So here are some other benefits of vitamin D, so that sunlight. So you're looking at it, the risk of reduces the risk of type two diabetes, it helps to heal some skin disorders. Now, you're not out in the sun for a long time. So remember those times of day that I spoke about. So for babies, especially, there's some babies who are born and they may have a yellowish tinge to their skin. That's called jaundice. By giving them, by exposing them to sunlight at small dosages, that actually helps to get rid of that, that, that jaundice. <laughs> also, it can, we talked about the mood, how sunshine helps to improve the mood. We talked about how it helps with your eye health. And believe it or not also, sunlight helps to reduce weight loss. So if you are looking to lose weight, just by being out in the sun, it stimulates your immune system. It also helps with digestion because when you're out there, you're not just standing on the sun, but you're also walking. Okay, let's see, am I supposed to have it? Okay. So you're also looking at, uh, let's see, we talked about the seasonal affective disorder and we talked about, oh, for memory also, we'll talk about that. So I'm, I'm not gonna touch that right now, but we'll talk about memory. So sunlight also helps to improve your memory because again, how vitamin D works within the system. And we'll do our first poll. So I'm gonna do less talking, well, more talking actually, because we're gonna get <laughs> into the polls. All right. So folks, feel free to use the chat box to answer these questions, or you can say them out loud as well. So the first question is, which vitamin, vitamin do you get from the sun? A is A, B is vitamin B, C is vitamin C, or D is vitamin D. So again, feel free to use a chat box or unmute yourself to answer these questions. Or even click on the polls, actually. Thank 
I feel like we should have like a your party um music. All right. So the question for that question is is vitamin vitamin D. D. Vitamin D. <laughs> awesome. Now the next question is which chemical does sunlight help your body to produce? A is estrogen, B is serotonin, C is cortisone, or D is insulin? Hmm. And if anybody wants to just say it out loud, feel free. I like interaction. <laughs> If, if I was doing this live in front of you, I would have been just, oh, trying to get you guys, you, you folks to talk and, and just share your thoughts with me because I like the interaction. Mm -hmm. All right. And the answer for that question is... You know this one, Nina, because that's all we talk about most of the time. Serotonin is correct. That's a free feel good drug that your body produces. It helps with stabilizing your mood, making you feel better, gives you a little burst of energy as, as well. So serotonin, serotonin, serotonin. Sounds great. And now the last question for this section is, what is the daily recommendation for vitamin D? A. Is 100 IU to 700 IU. B is 200 IU to 800 IU. C is 300 IU to 900 IU. And or D, 400 IU to 1000 IU. I don't know what music that is. I think that's the ice cream truck music. That I'm... <laughs> <laughs> All right, just a couple more seconds and then we will share the answer. And the correct answer is D, 400 IUs to 1,000 IUs. But remember what I said, that, that those numbers were produced for the soldiers back in World War II, and they don't necessarily reflect the amount that we need today. So on average, a person will need at least 3,000 IUs. And I have, I have my vitamin D, mine is a spray, Let's see, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. No, 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 hang on. I have to take off the. <sighs> Background, there it is. So, hmm. can't even see that. Is it too much light? Oh. <laughs> I'm trying different things here to get it so you can see it. If you cover it from the back, Mark, just like hand it out and have your hand like this at the back. Maybe it will show because I think it's a reflection. No, it's not the back. <laughs> it's the side. Oh, okay. So that's that's a bit better yet. That's better. Okay, so it's called, anyway, it's called Mankind. And it's a, it's a vegan D3 because I'm plant-based. It's a vegan D3, and but you can get D3, which is D3, which is suitable for everyone who are, who are not plant-based. So there are three types of, of D, of vitamin D. You can get vitamin D, vitamin D2, or vitamin D3. So vitamin D, is what your body converts D2 and D3 into. So vitamin D2 is 
from it's, it's a it's made from uh, it's a synthetic, so it's made from I don't know what it's made from, but it's synthetic, so it's suitable for vegans and vegetarians. And vitamin D three is from animal source, and basically it's from the wool of sheep, lanolin. Awesome! Thanks for sharing that, Mark. Let me end the poll. Share. You know what I noticed? I noticed I tried clicking on the response to send my poll in, mm -hmm. and it, it wouldn't take it. I can't. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I got the result kind of late, and then it all came at the same time. No, but when I try to click on a, an answer, it won't let me click on an answer. It doesn't like me. Oh, well, that is very weird. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm I'm co-hosting. That's why. Hmm. The host and the co-host can't can't vote. Right. Anyway, so the other thing that that vitamin D will do, it actually produces uh, something called nitric nitric oxide in our system, and that is what causes our blood vessels to expand, and that helps our heart rate to actually slow down. So that remember I said that it's good for heart health. So that's what's happening there. That nitric oxide is what's actually helping our blood vessels and our heart to function the way it should be. So if somebody, if you know somebody who's suffering from high blood pressure, tell them, get some sunlight. All right, now we're going to look at air. Now, fresh air, again, I'm going to stress fresh air. And you'll see here, pictures of this individual standing in an open field and just nature in front of them. So in the woods, in front of a lake. And the reason why I chose these pictures is because you want to be where the air is as clean as possible. Because when you inhale, and we're gonna talk about how to, how to breathe in a second. And when I say breathe, people think, Oh, I can breathe already. If I couldn't breathe, I wouldn't be alive, but we'll talk about that in a second. So it doesn't matter what time of the day you're out or, or how much time you're out there, just as long as you're out there getting some fresh air in. And even if you live in the city, it's better for you to be outside taking that air in as opposed to being inside. Again, the best time that you want to be outside would be early morning or closer to when the sun is going down. And the reason why is because traffic flow is less during those times. And that's a, like you have a, the less likelihood of breathing in a lot of carbon monoxide, which you don't want to do. So early morning, best, or, um, or late evening. Let's see, make sure. All right. so. You wanna make sure that you're getting all of that because it helps with improving your circulation. It helps with digestion. And here's a picture of, good, your, this, of your stomach, your stomach, but so digestion. So digestion, your digestive organ is actually a huge, it's long. So it starts from your mouth, without all the technical terms, it goes down your throat, which is your esophagus, goes into your stomach and your stomach is, is not a big organ at all. Then it goes from your stomach into your small intestine. And then from your small intestine, it goes to your large intestine, otherwise known as the colon. And then out it goes from to the anus. But your, your small, your large intestine, this right here is called your transverse colon. and it actually, they call it the floating, a floating organ. And the reason why is because it's just a membrane that actually keeps it up that way. Keeps it up, make it look like this, just keep it up. So as you walk, it actually moves and it helps with digestion. It helps with your, that organ actually breaking food down and taking out the water out of it and moving it along. So it goes to the transverse to the descending colon and then out of your body. So you know, make long and short, it also helps 
if you're constipated to get that out. So how does air, fresh air help with this? Well, when you take a lot of air in or you're taking deep breaths, and we'll talk about how to do that in a second. When you take deep breaths in, the air goes in and as it goes in, it's, it's charged and it, it floods your system with oxygen and it helps to break, it stimulates your, your digestive system and it just breaks, helps to break that food down. How do we take deep breaths? If I could see you now and I were to ask you, take a deep breath. I could almost guarantee that if not all of you, a lot, most of you will do this and your chest will go up. And then I say exhale and your chest will go down. When that's not really how we take deep breaths or how we should take deep breaths. I don't know how, well, I think I have an idea of how that actually became ingrained in our heads. I think back again when you saw, when i was a kid i remember watching these shows like uh, hogan's heroes and all these different army movies would come on and they would say soldier stand up attention and you stand up straight okay you stick out your chest and they'll say take a deep breath and, go, and the chest would go up and exhale chest would go down and i think what ended up happening was that became the general idea of how to take a deep breath when really your lungs extend just past your rib cage and you taking a deep breath by sticking out your chest and pulling in your stomach you're doing what is called shallow breathing so what's the problem with that if you're taking shallow breaths or your shallow breathing that oxygen doesn't get to your extremities to your fingers and toes and it needs to be it needs to get there so how do you take a proper breath if you were to put your hands on your stomach, and when you take a breath through your nose, your stomach should go out. And then when you exhale, the stomach should go in. So you inhale, stomach goes out, exhale, stomach goes in. So that will, that will facilitate proper breathing. You'll find that you'll get maximum oxygen intake, and that will do a few things. Heart health will help with your cardiovascular system, will help with your immune system. So this again is a picture of your immune system. So your immune system, these are your lymphatic vein, your, your lymphatic veins, and your lymphatic duct goes, lymphatic system goes all over. So this green, these are your lymphatic veins, and they're all over your, your body. But where they're primarily focused, the ducts. They are primarily under the chin, right here, the neck, the underarm, the groin area, and there's a few of them, the joint area. So the elbows, the back of the knees. So what ends up happening is when the toxins that they enter into the lymphatic system, they then get dumped into the lymphatic nodes. And then the nodes, well, there's actually a, a valve that leads up to the collarbone right in here where the lymph, the lymph dumps all of that toxin into the blood and the blood transport, transports it out. The thing is, in order for that system to work, we need to move. If we don't move, it doesn't drain because it's not like the, the, vascular, the cardiovascular system where the heart pumps, the heart pumps the blood and that's what moves the blood. The lymphatic system does not have a pump. What happens is if we're not moving, so you'll find that people who exercise, a lot of the, the trainers now, they actually incorporate jump training and that jump training helps the nodes to drain. And there are times when people, you'll find that you're, especially under your, your chin, your ear, that you'll find a lump and it's swollen and might feel tender. The reason why is because that node that's collected all that toxin, it hasn't drained. So it needs to drain. And 
fresh air will help to stimulate your system so that all these things happen. They function at a better, at a higher level, as if, as if, and if you were not exercising, or if you weren't getting out and getting in that fresh air, then you wouldn't have that. Also, fresh air helps to improve your mood as well, believe it or not. Fresh air helps to stimulate your brain so that you're more focused, so that you are energized, so you can actually go and perform better. So if in the late afternoon when you're at work and you feel that you're, you're feeling kind of sluggish, if you were to get up, go outside and just take a few deep breaths, especially the way I showed you, and you come back, you'll find that you're more focused, you're more, you're more energized to actually accomplish your task. And you'll find that you're better able to recall information. So get out there, get that fresh air, and you will become so much more productive. And it also makes you happier. So again, it stimulates the growth of the growth, the production of serotonin. And again, that free, happy drugs. So does it matter what season you go out or is there a particular season that you're only supposed to go out and get fresh air? No, every season you need to be out getting fresh air. So winter, spring, summer, fall, go out and get fresh air. If it's winter time, just make sure that it's not too cold because you don't want to be taking extremely cold air in because you can end up damaging your organs. So what you want to do is make sure you have your, your nose and mouth covered when you're going out in the, in the cold. So when you're breathing in, the air will be warmer as it goes down. Also, breathing is very important. Your mouth was never intended to be the breathing organ. It's actually your nose. So you should be inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your nose, believe it or not. So except for when you run, you might in, you want to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Okay. And our poll. Let me see, let me see, let me pull it up. Here we are. All right. Question number one is when is the best time of the year to go out for fresh air? A is winter, B is spring or summer, C is fall or D is year around. Again, feel free to use the chat box or the poll or even unmute yourself. So again, that's when is the best time of the year to go out for fresh air? A is for winter, B is for spring, summer, C is for fall, or D is year around. couple of seconds to answer that first question. And the answer is... Year round. Don't wait for spring or summer. Year round. It will benefit you significantly. Question number two is what body system does fresh air support? A is immune system, B is digestive system, C is cardiovascular system, or D is all of the above. Mm. <laughs> Again, feel free to use the chat box or the poll or unmute yourself. And the answer is? All of the above. So air helps to stimulate your production of white blood cells. And fresh air helps to helps your cardiovascular system because when you inhale fresh air, 
it's like it, it's it's the catalyst that causes everything to, to move and to go. And your digestive system, we talked about that already. So that helps to stimulate your digestive system so that your body's able to assimilate the food, the nutrients. Hmm. And last but not least, are true or false. Fresh air can give you more energy and a sharper mind. True or false? False. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is true. Because again, that fresh air. So, so if somebody has had good sleep, really restful sleep, and then let's say around 2 p.m., they start to yawn a lot. <sighs> it's not because they're tired. Your body is an amazing machine. So when your brain needs oxygen like really, really fast, it triggers something and it, and it causes you to open up. And when you take a deep, when you actually yawn, you actually take an influx of air. It's like, <gasps> I don't know if people notice that, but it's not, nobody does this when they're yawning. It's a deep breath because that air goes straight to the brain and it stimulates the brain so that things actually start to fire. All the neurons are firing. So the brain needed oxygen, that's why you're young. That's, I'm not saying that's in all cases, but for somebody who's had good deep sleep, and they're yawning, it's not because of their tiredness, it's because their brain needs that oxygen. So same with our bodies. When our bodies feel sluggish, especially after a long day and you're sitting in this chair for a long period of time, by getting up, going outside and just <sighs> three to six breaths, I can guarantee that you're going to feel invigorated. And if you don't, come and see me. We, have, we need to have a good talk. So three to six deep breaths. You're ready to go back and finish your day on a high. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Mark, for that. Just want My to... pleasure. So I just want to say, because that's the end of this part. So I just wanted to say that we need to make sure that we're getting, and the reason why, why I coupled sunshine with air is because I, the, they're partners, they go hand in hand. So getting outside and getting that sunshine and that air, they work synergistically in our system. So you want to make sure that when you're, you're again, that early morning for those who may have came in a bit late, the early morning, that first ray of sun, and as the sun starts going down, those are the best times. I see people jogging at noon and at one o'clock, and every time I see this, I think, oh, no, no, that's so bad, that's so bad, because the sun is at its highest at that time, and the UV rays are just beating down. And as good as the sun is, those UV rays, when they're at their highest intensity, that's when you end up getting skin cancer. And you don't want that. Also, the air quality is also not at its best at those times. So again, when you, you're inhaling, and especially for people who live in the city, when you're running at those times, the carbon monoxide level is higher. So you're breathing in those carbon monoxide poisons, I'm going to make it straight, they're poisons and they're actually causing damage to your system. So don't go running at those times, early morning, late evening. So you're getting the best of both worlds. The, the sun is prime again. And I've done, I do this, I'll get up and I'll go out and I'll just look out at the sun in the early morning and my eyes feel wonderful. They've also done studies which show that it's reduced the people who have glaucoma. It's actually reduced the glaucoma. So eye health, all about eye health. 
So you can be eating foods that are high in vitamin C, the carrots, the kiwis. Believe it or not, red bell peppers are higher than, than carrots in beta carotene. So you can take in all these foods, but the sun will also do that for you, okay? So take the time, get out. And we talked about grounding as well. For those of you who missed it, we talked about grounding where you're actually going outside and you're walking barefoot on the grass. That helps to ground you and actually also helps to take out the EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies that we get from our cell phones or Wi-Fi or the electronic devices that are around us. So to just debug, <laughs> that's the way we do it. Going outside and barefoot, walk on that grass, take a deep breath, debug. And this will all be part of your regime to health and wellness, which is what we want. As we age, we don't want to feel aches and pains. We don't want to suffer from dementia. What we want, we want all our faculties to function at the level as if we were back in our teenage adolescent stage. So let's continue to practice the eight doctor's laws, nutrition, exercise. What are some more, Nina? I'm putting you on the spot there. What are some more? Ah, sleep, <laughs> fresh air, sunshine. And we didn't talk about the last one yet. So we'll have to do that. That one's on Thursday. So with that, I say, let's keep at it. And with that, we, will, we are guaranteed to have optimum health. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mark. Now we're going to open the floor for Question and answers. I'm going to. Oh, oh, oh. 